So eros alone being wonderful, but it doesn't necessarily build or create anything of lasting value. Now because of that, you can probably see where eros and erotic is simply a strong force of eros, rather than thinking of it as lascivious or, or promiscuity or por pornography, erotic is putting a lot of energy into the force of eros so that its purpose is for its own benefit. So the erotic force on its own can be so exciting and so wonderful that when it begins to fade, we can have a tendency to want to go out and regenerate it even if we're pushing a little bit. So the erotic force carries the beauty of eros. But if we simply insist that that's all we want, we may find that we're having to make it up, that we're having to synthesize it, that we're having to scramble to get events and circumstances to support another burst of eros. Because without the other two, without the creative force of sex, creative force of sex or the creative force, and without love as a permanent state of unity, when all you've got is eros, then all you can look forward to is another burst of eros. And then another burst of eros. So it gets you up, it gets you out the door, it gets you excited, and then it's like you, 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 you um, crash and burn after eros is gone. Instead of having used that time period to start to build the building blocks of a container to hold a more developed spirit, more pleasure in life, and companionship or a job or, or an artistic endeavor. So that's if you are only using Eros. Now, there's another aspect to Eros, and that is that if you overuse Eros, and especially if you overuse Erox coupled with the sex force, it is actually a way to avoid intimacy. Because true intimacy comes from the quality of love. Eros is about getting and finding and wanting to keep love. The sex force is about being creative and active. But love is what's underpinning all these. So that if you focus only on Eros, and especially if you couple it with the sex drive, you can have a cycle that goes very, very strongly on a, conti a continual basis. But it doesn't really get anywhere. And it can actually mask or prevent the very intimacy that it can look like it's seeking. On the other hand, if you love the erotic force and it's very exciting to you, and you, you are not afraid of where it leads you, you can spend a lot of time in an eros-filled environment. You can create a life that has a lot of eros over and over again in many, many different planes. And you can be very open to that experience without necessarily being open, again, to the experience of deep intimacy. There's something that people who have been married a long time learn, and that is you have to fall in love with that person over and over again. The falling in love mean, meaning the eros element of love in a long-term relationship has to be rekindled, not kept, rekindled. So the, ero the force of eros in a long-term relationship or a long-term job or a long-term career or a long-term series of relationships with friends needs to be rekindled. And you can see where the creative force of sexuality or creative force just by itself needs to be swept into this. That's what's going to give Eros its strength and its power and its enthusiasm. So the two ways of avoiding intimacy by using Eros is one, to couple it with the creative force so that you've got a lot of drive and a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy, but you never get around to the love part. 
And the other is to revere Eros above all else and literally live in a pleasure world of Eros so that you are not called to build love and you do not incorporate the creative force. Interestingly, the guide says that Eros only exists in human beings. I, whenever I read the lectures, I, I find these new sentences. I feel like sometimes somebody rewrote them and slipped them in on me while I wasn't looking, because I don't remember that part. But the guide says that um, Eros is something that is only available in the incarnatory process when we reach the development of hum being a human being. That dogs and horses and eagles don't have the force of Eros as we are talking about. So it is a basic difference between us and the animal and mineral world that we have this fire and this ability to become passionate and aroused and, and leap tall buildings at a single bound and walk over mountains. But also that Eros is the main ingredient in the adventure of relationship. Now this is where the guide uh, goes into a specific discussion of marriage, which is a beautiful discussion. And again, you can feel a little bit left out if you're not in a marriage or a long-term relationship. But taking this both in the terms the guide talks about it and in a larger context that the spirit of adventure needs to exist in any long-term relationship of any kind. You need to rekindle the desire to go further, to listen, to, to, to speak, to share. 